Today I'm planning to walk through how to use the copy data activity in Azure Data Factory to load JSON files into an Azure SQL database. So we will be utilizing the TripAdvisor sample data set. Um, so to start, I want to take a look at a sample JSON file. As you can see here, um, we have multiple values saved and we want the copy data activity to load each of these values into its own column. And so we will need to utilize the advanced column mapping within the copy data activity to do this. So jumping back over to Azure Data Factory, we're going to start out by, um, if you're using Git integration, you need to pull a feature branch. And then we will start by creating a new pipeline. Uh, we want to name this pipeline a relevant name, Trip Advisor Data Load. And then, as I said earlier, we'll be using the copy data activity. And we will name this activity copy JSON to SQL. Now that we have named our copy data activity something more relevant, I'm going to jump over to the source tab. For the purposes of this video, I have already set up a data set that I will be using. Um, and so I'm going to select that. It is a blob container um, that in the data set is referencing the JSON file type. I'm going to pass in the directory that I have set up, reviews. And then in order to pass in all the files, I'm just going to not specify a file name by passing in a blank expression, which is at sign and two single ticks. There's probably other ways to do this, but this is the way that I use. Then I'm going to utilize the uh, file path type wildcard file path and specify the directory once again. And then I'm going to, I'm confident that this file path only contains files that I want to load. So I'm just going to use the wildcard there. And that is it for my source. I'm going to come back and add an additional column later on. Moving to the sync tab. I'm going to specify the SQL source or the SQL destination that I want these files to be loaded into the SQL database. And again, I have that set up. I'm going to specify the schema in my data set parameter and the table name. All right, my table is already created, but an easy way to get the schema passed from the JSON file to a, a SQL table is to select this auto create table. It's only available on some destinations. Jumping into mapping. Um, so if you have used the copy data activity before, you will notice that um, this advanced editor might be a new option for you. Um, and the reason that that is showing up is because we have a JSON data set as the source. So I'm going to select import schemas. And you can see I'm going to go ahead and hide some of these panels. You can see that it's automatically mapping all of our columns. It's reading into all of the objects. We have the option to delete and drop columns if we'd like to include them or exclude them. I'm going to include all the columns, but this is useful. If you want to only bring in certain columns, you can drop them out with that. You also have the option to turn on advanced editor, and this shows you the parsing or how it parses into each of the JSON objects. And so forth. I'm going to Turn that back off, make sure everything looks like I need to. 
uh, I need to map this. And so I'm going to uh, map the location as the ratings location because it is within the ratings object. And map this location as the other author location. All right, looks like everything else is mapped. And I want to specify the actual file that the row is being loaded from. So I'm going to select a new column under the source tab. I can see that my file path is already selected, but if it's not, you can select this drop down file path. I'm going to name this column in the source as source file. And then I need to make sure that this gets mapped. So I'm going to add a new mapping under the mapping tab. And go to advanced editor. and just map the source file like that. So we're not parsing into a JSON, so it's just going to be the actual column name. And then finally, in order to avoid the same files being reinserted, I'm going to um, change the write behavior to upsert under the sync tab and specify the key column as the ID column. And so for whatever source, JSON source you're using, you would just want to use a unique column here and so that it would do an upsert, um, which will update existing columns that have the same existing ID and then insert ones that do not. Okay. I'm going to select save. This will be um, committing this to the repository it's successfully saved and let's go ahead and test it out. So jumping over to before we click debug, jumping over here, I have an empty table with the same schema ready to go. So if I run this query, it's an empty table. All right, had some duplicate columns there, so I popped over to fix those in the mapping. Um, but now that we have a success, I'm going to click into the details, with the, which is this eyeglass column. We can see that there is six files read, eight rows read out of those files, and then eight rows written. 21 or so kilobytes written of data. Looks like it took eight seconds. Now that we have a success, I'm going to click into, click over to Management Studio and rerun the select statement. We can now see that we have our eight rows as shown shown in the copy activity and we can see as i go over to the far right i can see my source files and so we can see that two of these rows came from the review hyphen four json file and two of them came from review hyphen five and so as long as the objects have the same schema you're able to have multiple objects in each file and it will load different rows for each of those. Now that we've confirmed that our copy data activity works as expected, what if we want to set up a trigger so that anytime a file is loaded to the source location that this would automatically be triggered and load that data. In order to create a new trigger, we will select add trigger. New slash edit. We want to create a new trigger. We're going to start out by naming the trigger trip advisor trigger. This will be a storage event trigger, which is essentially an event hub that Microsoft has kindly set up for us. 
after selecting the type, we will narrow down and specify our container location. For blob path begins with and blob path ends with, we will specify the pattern that the files will need to follow. So this trigger will only be set off if the file that's added follows the pattern that we have. So we want to start by specifying the directory and then what the files will begin with. So reviews, forward slash review, and, and the blob will end with dot JSON. We want this trigger to be kicked off if a blob is created. We do want to ignore empty blobs and we want to start this trigger on creation. Selecting continue. It's now showing us the blobs that matched the pattern that we had set up. Here is the beginning of the pattern and the end of the pattern. Selecting continue. If our pipeline had parameters, we would need to set up specific parameters for this trigger run, but we do not have parameters. So I'm selecting save. Now that we have the trigger set up, it's important to remember that the trigger will not be officially started until after you publish. So because I was working on a feature branch, I went through the process to merge back into the main branch, the collaboration branch, so that I could publish. Now I can select publish. Now that we have our trigger and pipeline published to the data factory service, we can now test that the storage event trigger works as expected. So in order to test that out, I'm going to navigate to the container and directory into the directory that I have my review JSON files saved and upload a new review. I've selected upload. Now I should expect the under the monitor tab to see a new pipeline has been kicked off. If I click into that pipeline, I can see that my copy data activity is now in progress. And if I navigate over to view the table and rerun the query, I can see that I now have rows that are populated from the source file review hyphen seven. And the reason that the files, if I click back to the pipeline, the reason that the files did not reinsert any of the existing rows uh, from the blob storage running this copy data is because I have an upsert selected, which is basically merging in the new changes. And then if any of the previous files had changed, it would also write those into the table. So that is it. We have talked through creating a copy data activity to copy a JSON file into a SQL database using the advanced editor in the mapping under the mapping tab. We've also set up a storage event trigger to automatically trigger this pipeline whenever a file is added to that file location. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, please uh, feel free to leave a comment. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.